Greetings. I'm William Baker, music director for the William Baker Festival Singers and Chamber Orchestra. And I'm coming to you from my office at the William Baker Choral Foundation Center in Roland Park, Kansas. I come to invite you to hear the 2024 Kenneth Babcock Memorial Concert this coming Sunday, April 14th at 3 o'clock p.m. It'll be in the nave of the historic St. Mary's Episcopal Church, 1307 Home Street in downtown Kansas City, Missouri. Tickets are available at the door or online at festivalsingers.org forward slash concerts. I believe this concert to be among the most consequential and important performances in the history of our organization and our ensembles. In these present days of challenge and conflict, the stories of war and oppression and the promise of redemption, reconciliation and hope have never been more urgently expressed. I would like to share some background information on the magnificent works that will comprise this 90 minute performance. Benjamin Britten's setting of the ancient Te Deum prayer was written in 1944 as a commission to celebrate the centenary of St. Mark's Church in Swindon, England. It was first performed on April 24th of 1945, just weeks before the victory in Europe celebration following World War II. The Te Deum prayer has long been ascribed to authorship in AD 387, perhaps by St. Andros, who died in 397, or St. Augustine, who died in AD 430. But there are indications that much of its phrasing comes from earlier sources. The version set by Britain is the traditional form from the Anglican Episcopal Book of Common Prayer. It's commonly sung in the Matins or morning prayer services. The petitions of the canticle quote phrases from the Psalms. It praises and venerates God offers a creedal formula on the birth, passion, and resurrection of Christ, and concludes with the prayers for deliverance that will usher in the body of our concert. I believe Benjamin Britten, 1913 to 1976, to be one of the most underrated composers of the 20th century. Robert Shaw once said that he was the greatest English composer since Purcell. William W. Dreyfus, is a composer who turned from music to a career in law. Songs of the Holocaust for soprano solo, chorus, piano, gypsy violin, and cello was premiered by the William Baker Festival Singers Atlanta over two decades ago and performed at the Piccolo Spoleto Festival. Our own Kansas City chorus performed it here in Hellsburg Hall in 2014 and recorded it on CD and digital platforms. Our performance was broadcast on NPR's performance today. Songs of the Holocaust is a set of arrangement of tunes and words found by scholars that were first sung in Jewish ghettos in Poland between 1937 and 1943. In his settings, Dreyfus has sought not a historically accurate recreation, but an attempt to honor the spirit of the songs and their message. I think he has succeeded in this work through the elements of the music has set, particularly the classical elements of piano and cello, contrasting the gypsy violin and Zardas rhythms. I am pleased to say that Mr. Dreyfus will be in Kansas City this Sunday for the performance. Leonard Bernstein wrote the Chichester Psalms in 1965 from a commission by three cathedrals for a music festival. Like the festival Te Deum, it begins with prayers of praise and thanksgiving, then to the serenity of the beloved 23rd Psalm. That serenity is torn asunder as the tenderness of Psalm 23 is interrupted with the harsh words of Psalm 2, 1 through 4. Why do the nations so furiously rage together? In the third and final section, the words of Psalm 131 bring perspective and comfort in the humble prayer that is central to the Jewish Shabbat ending tenderly in the first verse of Psalm 133, the Hina Matov. Behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. The central work on the program is the Dona Nobis Pacem of British composer Rayfon Williams, primarily on texts of scripture and on the poetry of American Walt Whitman. Von Williams encountered the horrors of war firsthand as an ambulance driver in World War I. 
This piece was written in 1936 as England was beginning to feel the tremors of the impending conflict with Germany that would lead to World War II. The visceral imagery of Whitman's poetry, most vividly set in his homage to Lincoln when lilacs last in the dooryard bloom, tells the story of the senselessness and horror of conflict, the power of reconciliation, the enduring hope for peace, and the promise of eternal life. I believe this to be one of the most significant works of the 20th century. Our program culminates with a short work by former festival singers, composer in residence, Ed Fraser Davis, now director of our Chicago-based Vox Venti Ensemble and the director of our Institute for Choral Creativity. It was written and premiered in the Babcock Memorial Concert on March 14th, 2021. The concert was given during the COVID year when almost every choral entity in America, except for those of the Choral Foundation, shunned regular rehearsals and indoor concerts. At Our Last Awakening is a text of one of my favorite metaphysical poet theologians, John Donne, who lived from 1572 to 1631. Donne's poem claims the promise that at the last there is hope for eternity that transcends all the powers of this world to hurt or divide us. Bring us, O Lord, at our last awakening, into the house and gate of heaven, to enter into that gate and to dwell in that house, where there shall be no darkness nor dazzling, but one eternal light, no noise nor silence, but one equal music, no fears nor hopes, but one equal possession, no ends nor beginnings, but one equal eternity. In the habitation of thy glory and dominion, world without end. Amen. My heart is full of the music of this program. I anticipate it as much as any concert I've ever conducted. It will be a journey through pain, separation, and conflict, and it will call forth some of the worst fears we face as humans in relationship to each other in the context of time and eternity. Most importantly, however, is its affirmation of eternal hope and reconciliation in the seemingly coarsening world we see around us. What can be said or sung with greater urgency? I bristle at the silly phrase, finding safe spaces. We see it in the news and hear about it on college campuses and corporate offices. I guess it is a human instinct to want to hide from the traumas and the pathologies of our lives in this present benighted sphere where we live. Great music does not offer safe spaces. The journey we are about in this concert is one that approaches war, conflict, pain, struggle, and reconciliation in a vivid, no-nonsense, and inescapable manner. The music is challenging in many and various ways. The rhythms are occasionally nasty. Some of the dissonances are harsh. Some of the articulations are nightmarish. No safe space here for either performers or for the audience. It is my fervent hope, indeed it is my urgent prayer, that you will be with us Sunday afternoon to hear this concert. These are pieces that must be sung and that must be heard. Again, our performance is Sunday, April 14th, 3 o'clock p.m. at the St. Mary's Episcopal Church, 1307 Home Street in downtown Kansas City, Missouri. A wine and cookie reception will follow the concert. Tickets are available at the door or online by visiting festivalsingers.org forward slash concerts. Thank you, and may God bless you.